When Jacobson returned to Denmark from America, she learned that the Turks were intensifying their persecution of the remainder of the Armenians. But before the final round of massacres occurred, American missionaries and the Near East Relief were committed to take 110,000 orphans out of Turkey. Some were transferred to Greece, to Russian Armenia, and others to Syria and Lebanon. With the transfer of so many orphans to Syria and Lebanon, and in order to continue the great task entrusted to her and sister Karen Marie Peterson, Jacobson returned to the work field on January 17, 1922, and greeted the new refugees in Beirut. The situation was nearly indescribable. Everything was in chaos. Mobs of people with bundles on their backs were suddenly gathered in one place where they had to raise tents or find a corner to sleep or gather their families, find food, or do cooking, amid rain and mud as pools of water flowed everywhere. By July 3, 1922, she was entrusted with 208 children from Cilicia, who found a new home at Zouk Mikhail, between the cities of Big Loss and Beirut. Other missionaries fulfilled a desperate need for both physical and spiritual care by opening workshops, clinics, kindergartens, skill centers, and Bible schools for the Armenians. The home at Zoop Mikhail grew so rapidly that many practical problems developed. The shortage of water forced Jacobson to search for a better home for the children. Adru's prince helped her by renting her his huge villa inside in Saida. She moved there with the entire household on May 1, 1923. On one sunny day, Maria Jacobson stood on the steps of the new home, surrounded by 300 orphans. In her hands, she had a bag filled with candy that she was going to distribute to them. The children immediately became excited and crowded around her. Anxious to reach her, they shouted, Mama, Mama, and stretched their hands out, desperately trying to grab the candy. Suddenly, the picture of the children with all their hands outstretched, struck her with a vivid image. They are like newly hatched birds, she thought. From that day on, she named the new home, the Bird's Nest. Maria Jacobson finally succeeded in creating a safe haven for her small Armenian children. And it has lived on in the memory of all those she helped and their children. In 1928, KMA purchased property from the American Near East Relief on the grounds of Gbail, Biblos. The American Near East Relief had run the Armenian orphanage from 1922 to 1928. A summer home was established in the village of Terzaria in 1930, high up in the mountains, that was used as a health resort for the children during summer vacations. Since then, the Danish bird's nest has become legendary in the Middle East.
new missionaries arrived at the end of the war to normalize and strengthen the weakened parts of the work. Improving the educational standards and establishing the Aftercare Foundation, in 1953, for the higher education of Bird's Nest graduates. Besides Maria Jacobson, there was now Pastor Olaf Emil Paskey, with his Norwegian wife, Tant Kirsten Elizabeth Ask Paskey. Auntie Magda Sorensen, Jacobson's sister, Anna Jacobson, was already hired in 1931, and many others soon followed. In 1950, Maria Jacobson received the Danish Kingdom's Gold Medal Award, in appreciation for her humanitarian work. And on December 14, 1954, for her 50th Jubilee celebration, at the American University in Beirut, she was presented with the Gold Medal of Honor by the Lebanese government. From her post in Lebanon, she toured Denmark in 1957 to report on her activities to friends of Armenians in Denmark. She told them, I think this will be the last time I see Denmark. She knew that she would live and die among her beloved Armenian people and that her home was now the bird's nest. Although, physically weakened, she was still at her post writing letters to raise funds for the bird's nest, even up to her death. By the end of the last week in April 1957, and every Sunday evening thereafter, Jacobson began to recount her life story and her experiences in Harput, Turkey, to the children of the Danish bird's nest. I was 11 years old then, and still remember her telling us the vivid and emotional stories that are now documented in her diary. She felt compelled to explain to us why she wrote so intensely in her diary. The atrocities she witnessed during the Armenian massacres had so appalled her that she could only talk about them in her diary. Her experiences with the Turks had been so terrifying that even after she returned to her safe home in Denmark, she still did not wish to reveal her name or the existence of her diaries. Probably because of her determination to return to her field work among the Armenians. She must have believed it necessary to keep her discretion as the servant of God and not act as a political commentator. That also explains why no one knew about her diaries, because they only appeared 10 years after her death. 